Good evening. I hope you're all well. I'm continuing my, what seems to be perhaps a series for the moment, a little look at a lens. And this time, it's the Pentax, SMC Pentax A Macro 100mm 2.8. And here it is mounted on a K1 body. Just tell you a little bit about it. It's got quite a good reputation. I'll tell you how I got it. It was part of a, a lot that appeared in a second-hand shop quite some time ago, many years ago. At the time, as I've explained before, when I think people were abandoning Pentax, it was probably a professional photographer, I imagine. There were three LX bodies, quite a number of lenses, and they were at a very good price. That kind of shop didn't really deal with fat. Well, film just wasn't very, you know, it was on the way down so they had them and I, I think they probably wanted to get rid of them at a very good price and I went and I looked at a lot of them and I said well if I had the lot they gave me an even better price so I got the credit card out with the intention of selling many of them in which case it would almost have cost me very little um I did sell a number but not as many as I intended <laughs> so anyway and this was one that I kept even though I wasn't using it uh, I put it on the LX body a few times and looked through it and but I wasn't really very interested intention to sell it never got round to it seven elements in seven groups f2.8 to f22 it's got eight shutter blades it's what's un slightly unusual about it or advantageous is it's a one times magnification so it's a true macro some of the earlier k's and m's were uh, 0.5 but this is one one times these days i've seen some that are two times it's got a fixed rear element extension which you'll see when i show you close up pentax forms say it has achieved a legendary status amongst its users well used examples on ebay you'll get for about 400 mint examples as this one is apart from one thing which i shall show you physically cosmetically mint and optically mint um you'll get them for about 600 pounds didn't use it just sat there not a good idea i don't think which is to do with why it's not quite mint but it's operationally fine uh sat there and it's sat there and it's sat there and then uh obviously i got this but still wasn't that interested in it because it just psh, i don't know but then we had uh lockdown the weather was wonderful the first lockdown and um the gyms were shut and i was out in the garden doing my exercising and that was it in here out on the bike which was great and out in the garden but out in the garden things were changing the whole time it was spring it was wonderful weather and i for the first time even though i've had the garden for a while for the first time i really started to appreciate it and uh i started to use this for some reason just because leaves and flowers and insects and everything was changing all the time and I started to use this, and it became my most used lens. A few things about it. I used it handheld, sharp enough for me. Depth of field is minimal. So, f and focusing, you can see the focus is, is quite, even though there's there are many turns to it, you can see. It's critical. You move the slightest bit after you've focused and before you press the shutter and you're stuffed. The wind blows and moves whatever it is you're photographing the slightest bit and you're stuffed. That's something to do with this lens particularly. It's just macro lenses generally. And a lot of the macro, even the autofocus ones, people say, well, really, you need to manually focus. I think manually focus, have a tripod. Or, because it's digital, you can have several goes if you think things might have moved. Um, so that's not a criticism of this lens at all, but just uh, something I found. Though, actually, I would say yes, th even with all th all that um, uh, rotation, you still find yourself doing this. Or sometimes I leave it and I just move the slightest bit, whatever. 
No problems with uh, chromatic aberration, I don't think. Uh, I might have seen it once or twice, but not in, the, not in the ones I've done anyway. I'll show you, put some photographs at the end there. I think with macro, generally, one has to accept that it's a slow and considered process. Anyway, I've gone on at some length. I think it's best we have a butcher's from above. Here is then the SMC Pentax A macro 100mm f2.8. Here's what it looks like on the, uh, the K1. And you can see there considerable extension that's provided. You look at that and you think, yeah, quite uh, critical focus would be available, and it is. But you can see, even with the, but you can see the amount it moves just with a, a slight turn. There are the markings uh, around here, which I pay no attention to whatsoever. I'm sure they're of use to someone who knows what they're doing. In very good condition. Once again, I suspect with his AE series that this is plastic the aperture ring. Very nice. Very nicely damped, extremely smooth. I think um, metal, 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 and I think plastic there. Very deeply set front element, as you can see. So not really any need for a lens hood. Look at that. Now let me show you, at one stage, where are we, at one stage, there's the uh, aperture, I thought it had been left. This is why I don't think it's a good idea to leave, just leave things in the same position, just in storage really effectively. And when I Took it out just to have a look at it after a couple of years or something. I mean, I don't know how long, many years I've had this. I, I seem to remember that I noticed some very fine kind of oil. I thought, uh oh, because you know there's grease obviously for this. And I think it can separate, particularly I think if it's not used. I mean, obviously doing this stirs things up a bit. If just left sat in one position, I think that then there's any separation. And I think I noticed some oil on the aperture blades, but I don't see it now. However, one thing I did notice, I'm going to show you. Oh, no. let me show you the uh, fixed rear element. So you'll notice that as I focus here, that moves, but the rear element doesn't. Don't know what that's about. It obviously has some benefit, but uh, also got to be pretty careful because it's always right at the end there. So it could be quite easy to damage, and any mark or damage on the rear element is more significant 
where you wouldn't be able to damage that. You'd have to go some. But he's more significant, I believe, than um, any marks on the front element. Because anything there is just near the sensor or the film plane. Shows up more. So I'm told. But if I, um, yeah, if you look here, set it to minimum. And what I noticed, there doesn't seem to be any sign of any oil anywhere. But this was sluggish. Now this can happen with lenses. I think particularly if they're not uh, used much. Uh, let me show you now. Get a good angle with the light. There's a good angle. Were you better from the front? No, I'm going to have to do it here because I want to keep my fingers here. There's a good one. I'll press the right thing. Now. Doesn't really show up. Well, can you see that as it opens, is it a little bit slow? It was slower. I took it out and did this many, many times. Let me get uh, another lens to show you. Now, what if I compare it to this, uh, the Hollywood 28, which is older? And I can feel I mean, the springs are just a lot stronger. Now, I don't know that these springs have weakened. I mean, maybe they can, but it seems to be in both directions. That would be... Um, or whether they were already not quite so... But it's a bit difficult to tell because there isn't the snappiness. Is it actually any slower looking at it now? I certainly think it was. But the, uh, the issue is how quickly it shuts down. If, if it's a little bit slow opening up, then that's of no consequence really because it means um, the exposure is going to be right. It just means that when it opens up, and particularly being a macro lens, you're going to work slower anyway. This is going to take a while for the screen to go to full brightness. But with macro, you're unlikely to... Um, for that to be an issue, obviously, if it's slow to if it's slow to shut down, it means that the exposure will be incorrect because it won't shut down fully before the shutter fires. But the shutting down just because it doesn't feel that fast, but I think it is. Anyway, the upshot is, I got in touch with a gentleman who used to service my LXs years ago. And he does lenses and so on. And I showed him a video of this. And he said, uh, you know what? If you're not getting any issues, leave well enough alone. And it has improved. And I think he's right because you start taking things apart. And, you know, these are irreplaceable, really, aren't they? And, um, you know, leave well enough alone. If it's working, leave it be. If it becomes so it doesn't work, then you may have to do what you may have to do. But I've uh, left it alone. So I think, yeah, if you've got these lenses, I think um, every few months, maybe twice a year, three, four times a year, maybe, I would say take them out, rotate them, store them at a different, the other, at least just the other way up, maybe on their sides, just the other way up or something. Rotate everything. Just keep an eye. And uh, work the aperture a few times. Yeah, I mean, that's that seems fine. This doesn't really feel it. It doesn't make that snappy noise the other one does. Right. That's surely enough for even the diehards amongst you. So I'll now show you Lovely. I'll show you the um, some photographs. They're not great photographs, but just um, for what they're worth. And uh, maybe uh, show you a few things that I notice. These are some flowers about to bloom. You can notice the detail 
there on the one there closest to us and the background blur very very soft there's the fly all of these handheld uh, I was quite pleased with that one if you zoom in you can see there's still quite some detail handheld this is the weed believe it or not look at the flower down the bottom there closest to us that's what I focused on I believe and then uh, I went closer still and there is that flower and then I went closer still look at the background there the blur and this coming up is, I believe, closer still, about as close as it will go. Again, handheld and uh, certainly acceptably sharp to my mind. My poor cat there with a mosquito on his nose. I managed to capture that handheld with all the focusing stuff and problems. But, you know, you can practice to get used to it. This is just an example of uh, a wonderful church near me. I'll show you what it's like just using it as a normal lens uh, for architectural detail and again they're obviously focused on the statue towards us and you can see a little bit of a out of focus background there and then one at night this I believe is wide open so maybe a little bit soft and then another one where I've shut down to about five six I believe so there we go hope that gives you an idea of what the lens is uh, capable of and I'll see you again for another one sometime